Hey guys, Ben with Ben's Viewfinder here, and we are here today to discuss how to take a single image and turn it into an HDR image. And I'm going to do this using three different methods, and I'm going to use it, uh, show you how to do it with a portrait, and we'll do a regular image also. Now, I'm doing this as a continuance to my crazy portrait video I did yesterday, and some people are curious how to do it with HDR, and it's essentially the same type of idea, only there's a few different types of software you can use, or add-ons. Now, the main piece of software I use is a piece of software called Photomatics, which I personally think is the best and most detailed and has the most versatility to it as far as um, a merging program goes. Now, if you're not familiar with HDR, you're curious what I'm talking about. HDR is basically a way of stacking images of multiple exposures on top of each other to give you a full spectrum image with lots of color ranges and you get to see all the shadows and the lights and the details and so basically I'm going to show you how to do this in Photomatics. I'm going to show you a couple ways how to do it in Photoshop. I'm going to use a portrait of a guy named Don I did to do this and basically you want raw files to do this. You have to shoot in raw or it's not really going to work. You can do it using JPEGs but you again have to shoot multiple exposure values to be able to do that. So to do single shot make sure you shoot in RAW. So I have one here of a portrait, one here of a silo from a long time ago that I did that's a RAW also. And what we're going to do is going to take, we're going to drag this file on top of Photomatics to open it and it's going to give me this little menu here and usually when you're doing a single shot because of the fact that it's going to be changing your exposure values from your stock image that you took it's usually a good idea to reduce the noise you don't have to do 150 percent you can do whatever you can try it and see how it looks and if it's not very noisy you can turn this down some or and I always do reduce chromatic aberrations again because it's altering one image I usually like to try to to leave that and allow it to compensate so we'll hit OK and it's gonna do the work for you and it's gonna basically spit you out a basic HDR image right away now like I was talking about yesterday when we were doing the crazy exposure or crazy portrait setup we're gonna have to have the original image to mask back in the details of the person because obviously his skin isn't gonna look correct when you see this image it is reducing noise it's spitting out the image and so boom here you go we have an HDR portrait of a person and using photomatics you can mess with this stuff quite a bit you can bring down your color saturation if you want you can make it really crazy. You can change a lot of things. This is all these sliders do a lot of different things. And I'm not going to walk you through how to use Photomatics right now, but you can change basically anything you'd really want to imagine messing around with, making it smoother, making it grittier. And once you're done with this, we just would simply hit apply and it's going to tone map it. there we have this and we're just going to go to go ahead and hit file save image and it's going to spit out what's called a tone mapped image and it's going to save it to the same location as my raw that I had now but it's spitting out a JPEG and so now we have our regular file here or our tone map file here and our regular raw here and so we'll go ahead and we'll open our raw file in Photoshop And there's two ways to open this. I'm just doing it this way for the heck of it, but you can do it either way. And then I'm going to open this also. And I'm just going to simply copy and paste the layers. But you can open the files in a stack, which I've shown you how to do in other images. So we're going to hit Control A to select all, Control C to copy this layer. We're going to hit Control V to copy this layer over here. So Oh, you can't see my layers. Here are my layers here. So basically, I just took this single layer from this from our tone mapped image, copied and pasted it into my layer group here with my uh, regular raw file. So now we have him looking normal, and we have him looking all HDR'd. And we're going to simply go in here, and we are going to layer mask his skin back in and his details. Because obviously, if you look at his hands and everything here, they don't look correct. They don't look like skin. They look really weird and wonky. It's actually slightly shifted. I don't quite know why that is. Something about the way it HDR'd it. Uh, and so, really quickly, we would just go through, we would brush back through the details of him to make him look normal. And like I said, I'm not going to do this a whole lot because I don't want to 
I have other videos on how to layer mask and things such as that. But we would just simply bring back in his skin. Make him look human being again. Yeah, I have my opacity turned down, so this isn't going as fast as I had originally hoped. But basically, you now have his normal looking skin from your normal image into your HDR environment. And even though it's a sloppy job of doing it, now you have a nice crazy HDR background with a normal looking human. And his skin doesn't look all alien like anymore. If we disable the layer mask, you can see the difference in his skin. Not quite sure where the shift came from. But probably when I copied and pasted it, I removed it or something, or moved the image. So. So that's one way to do it. So we're going to close all this out and then we're going to reopen and I'm going to show you how to HDR doing a couple of different other methods besides using photomatics. And I will eventually do a full tutorial on how to really use photomatics and how to really go into the details of doing HDR work. So we are going to open this image all the way. And so besides using photomatics, there's two other ways that uh, I'm semi-familiar with. Now I haven't used either of these tools really extensively. I was introduced to HDR using Photomatics. I've always used it. That's the tool I prefer. I have dabbled. I messed around with these other things a little bit, but I couldn't really give you a very good explanation on how to use them. But this filter is made by Nick Collections, which I believe is Google. And they have, all of their filters are very well done. Their Color Effects Pro, their, I use Silver Effects Pro a lot for my black and white work. They're very good company. I just simply prefer Photomatics over HDR Effects Pro, but there's this tool here, and simply again we bring in the RAW file. Now, when you use Nick Collections, it's going to create when you edit something using a filter with Nick Collections, it creates a copy of the image afterwards. Otherwise, we would have duplicated the layer beforehand before we were to edit, because again we want to always keep an original that is with their normal looking skin and everything. And so in this case. I like I said I'm not really used to this either but I think it's essentially the same type of idea we have all these sliders that you can mess with you can mess with your contrasts and your exposures and you can mess with your tone and really bring up your strength of things and create all this craziness so I so now we're getting a little bit more detailed and kind of craziness we'll take these shadows out and mess with the highlights a little bit. And so you can do create an HDR effect using this type of stuff and again I'm not super familiar with this system so I couldn't tell you exactly the best way to do this but then basically you just hit OK once you're done messing around with it it's gonna save the image and we're gonna do the same thing we just did only I, I won't go through the whole process again but it actually did not create a duplicate, probably because I had it locked. I'm not 100% sure, but it might be because the layer was locked, so it wasn't able to create a duplicate. But if this happens, you should be able to just simply reopen your RAW file again and do exactly like we were doing before and select your layer here, hit Control A, Control C to duplicate the layer and control V to bring it into here and again now we're right back where we were we have a layer with his skin looking normal and an HDR layer and we would just once again layer mask in the details to make him look normal again and then you'd have yourself an HDR environment now the last way I'm going to show you how to do this is using what is actually built into Photoshop and you don't have to pay for it and in this case I would duplicate my layer to start off with because this does not create it so now we have our regular layer down below which is going to have his normal skin we've got the layer we're going to HDR and if you go up to your image here go down to adjustments and there's an HDR toning tool inside of here and this is the one I'm least familiar with and I don't know anybody who actually does this Oh, we may have to actually bring in, yeah, it's going to flatten the image. 
we're going to have to bring back in the, the normal looking layer again. But I don't know anybody uses this tool to do it, but it's free, I believe. So I don't think you, so for people who are just starting out want to mess with it, you can mess with this and get yourself started. I know Photomatix has a, a trial period or, or a free software trial where you can use their software and save images. I think it watermarks them until you buy the full version of it. I couldn't tell you, I bought the Nick collection as a big, uh, as like a bundle package, so I couldn't tell you how much HDR Effects Pro is. You'd have to look it up. Just Google it, and they'll be able to tell you. A lot of times, you can find coupon codes and things like that to get a little bit of money off. Uh, but I would probably recommend using one of those two tools. But if you get good at it, there's a lot going on here, and you can essentially, essentially create the same type of idea here. You can mess with your strength, and you can mess with your radiuses to give yourself different effects. And there's you know different pull down menus to mess with different parts of the image we'll bring out some details and we'll make it more vibrant and more con and or a little bit more saturation and we'll give it this kind of crazy look and so the idea is essentially the same though you're creating a crazy looking environment to your liking and we're gonna just mask back in the details of the of the person how we want them and again this isn't a very good editing job and I wouldn't use this as a bias basis for anything but once again we just hit OK it's gonna convert your image to an HDR we'll unlock that image again we'll open our regular looking layer oops cancel select all with control A control C to copy control V and so now again we have a crazy looking environment and we'd simply just layer mask in him looking normal into our crazy looking environment now I will say that HDR in general is very it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of time to make your images look good I wouldn't recommend doing something as simple as what I just did here I don't think this looks very good at all but it, I'm just giving you an introduction on how to get started with it and it really I would take time and I would really go through these tools and I'd really learn them properly Photomatix is the one I use more than anything and I know what all those sliders do and I know how to create the image and the the effect that I'm going for now the same type of thing applies for when you're doing a single image of a scenery. Same type of thing that I showed you at the very beginning. Again, I used Photomatix, but you can do the same type of thing. Just drag your raw file into Photomatix, open it up. It'll convert the one file. What it's basically doing is it's taking that one file and it's in computing, a, a, taking the dark areas and overexposing them, taking the light areas and underexposing them a little bit and finding those details, those interesting parts of an image and then putting those together on top of each other to give you this. And now if you look, let me open this up really quick in Windows Live Photo Gallery and I will show you the differences. This is the image we started with, just a single raw file and this is what it looks like when we took that single image through Photomatix. It's a big difference. You get to see a lot more vibrancy, a lot more details in the clouds, a lot more of the grittiness and interesting detail in the silos. It just creates a, I personally think it creates a more interesting image. I guess it's a, a personal preference thing if you enjoy the style of photography or if you enjoy this style of editing and processing. But so you don't necessarily have to go out, you don't necessarily have to learn how to bracket images, you don't have to learn how to do all that stuff. You can do this stuff using single images, just make sure you shoot in RAW, like I always recommend, and you'll be able to create some cool post-processing. So I hope this helped you guys out, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comment below, I'll do what I can to address those. If you want to follow my work, it's at bensviewfinder.com. You want to follow my daily blog and my photos, I put them up on facebook at ben's viewfinder or you can get the link off of my website and i hope you guys enjoyed the video and please subscribe and i will keep doing them thanks a lot guys